Alright. Let's, let's run it back. <laughs> yeah! Oh no, why did we run by so many people? You know why. <laughs> Saren saw that Mirth was distressed as she walked around the edge of camp. What are you looking for? The Derek Watch! Kambara, she's gone? Oh, we're trying to keep an eye on her. Oh, this time I fear she's gotten a weir. For good? I don't know. Oh, what is me when I do know where she is? Saren had already made up his mind to find Kambara. Stay here in case she comes back. Oh, the bait oh. and switch! Saren broke away and entered the forest. It was late in the day, so it was very dark in the shade. He heard a noise ahead of him. Kambara? Scorpion. He could barely see. The noise moved again and he heard a faint laughter from a woman. He was sure it was her, but Saren couldn't see her because she was a scorpion. What are you doing out here, Kambara? Come, find, come to find me, have you? I knew you would. Simply can't leave me alone. Her laughter was now behind Saren. He spun around. Uh, what? A glint of light caught his attention. Kambara's eyes glistened in the shadows. I see you now. Come on out. Come out of that. After effects. Effect. No. Come into the dark and get me. Saren didn't understand why she was playing games with him. Were you trying to escape back to the swamps? I thought you agreed to stay. Come in to get me, Saren. She purred at him a second time. Saren sighed and advanced into the darkness, focusing on the witch's eyes. He stumbled forward in blindness and tried to feel for the tree he knew was there. Come. He found a warm body instead of a tree trunk. The pair of eyes he was supposed to be watching were suddenly right in front of him. Bara? No, this is not Bara at all. Nothing about this is Bara. The previous scene was Bara. Saren was holding Kamara against a tree in a moment of disbelief. She had tricked him into this position. Very good. I think they'll like you very much. Her words fell against his face. Weird. That's weird. <laughs> he swallowed and tried. Yeah, right? Like, like it sounds like she spits when she talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kambara closed any gap he formed. Have you gone mad? Don't be so harsh on yourself. Why did you come all the way out here? I wanted to see what would happen. I'm very happy you came instead of the druid. Kambara's hands found Saren's chest and he gasped. <laughs> I don't understand. What is to understand? Uh, we need to, uh, how do you say, enter the Underrealm. Kambara's eyes narrowed in on him. And Saren's head grew heavy, staring at them. That's weird. He leaned forward, but Kambara stepped back and lured him to follow her with, his, with her eyes. She walked backwards slowly, and Saren obediently followed. She was the only thing that Saren could see. Hey, come here. Get over here. Ah! No! Stop! Kambara was knocked out of Saren view, but he could hear her laughter. Ah, Saren! Shake from her spill! Saren blinked and looked around. Kambara was smiling only a few paces away. Mirth stood in front of Saren, blocking him from a dangerous cliff. Jesus! <laughs> I was not actually going to do it. I was playing with you. What just happened? <laughs> You could probably fly. Sexy murder. Yeah. <laughs> she bewitched you. Ah, it was very easy. I think he secretly desires me. And by secretly, I mean, let's face it. You did what? It was a joke. I was going to do anything. Why are you so mad? It's only a joke. I won't believe her. I caught her in time, so now she's lying to save herself. No, you ruined joke. Why are you so mad? After encounter with Succubus, looks like you need some training in bewitchment. You tried to kill me? Yeah. If I wanted to kill any of you, I would not waste my time with anything as tedious as this. Fair. Besides, why would I kill you before I've had any fun with you? I'm not here for your amusement. No, he's, he's I'm not here for your entertainment. He's a pink song. He's very good. Oh, you're, you're fun. I'll take you to Lorraine for judgment. I'll request the highest punishment. That would be so good, right? Just like, 
She tried to kill Saren. Mm hmm. She, she tried to lure him off a cliff. Oh. We, we need to, we need to banish her and punish her or kill her or something. Why? It sounds really funny. <laughs> <laughs> off a cliff, you say? Like a big cliff? Like a how, how high? Like we're talking broken bones, or we're talking just like splattered? <laughs> Saren's like, ah, uh, no, 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 just. Saren, Saren, come with me on this journey. Well, not me, really. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm saying it would be good for morale. <laughs> Mirth gestured at Kamara and vines shot out of the ground and wrapped around the witch's hands to bind her. Ah, uh, this is not a good idea. Saren? Kamara deigned to look at Saren for help, but he only looked away in anger. He couldn't believe he allowed himself to be fooled by her, almost at the cost of his life, which is worth something. Oh, we do get it! Alright. And Loren. <clears throat> Loren couldn't deny what Kambar's joke appeared to be and had to punish her. Mirth suggested she be put to death as she promised, however Karen forbid it. Karen gave Kambaro his one reprieve after <laughs> Karen's like, uh, Cliff, you say? Oh, it's very good. It's, oh, it's so, so like, was it that easy to ensorcel? I mean, it's just it's sort of shameful, really. It's the penis. It does terrible things. Um, Kamara, Karen gave Kamara one reprieve after helping help Loren find her in the Chizulu Temple. And after warning them about the war, she knew that Kamara was not seeking to kill them. Kamara was shaken from Karen, Karen's generosity and how close she had come to Loren's wrath. She sat by the fire in silence for the entire night. Saren couldn't help from, but pity her, even though she had bewitched him. Jesus. Karen believes you are worthy of her grace. Kamara's great gaze drifted to Saren. I meant to scare you, not to kill you. If I wanted to kill you, it would be scorpion time. That is also cruel. Yeah. <clears throat> no, you're not. My queen vouches for you, and so do I. Kamara looked away. I am not flattered since now I know you are stupid. <laughs> when I look at you, that's all I feel I can be. Yes, because I am smart. You are stupid. This is weird. Let me tell you about how this conversation goes. Perhaps everyone else is right. Perhaps you have been bewitching me this whole time. I wrote that, a song lyric about that once. Maybe I really have been mistaken about you. Who is cruel one here? You claim you had faith in me and then immediately sold out? What is this, some kind of expectation subversion thing? Fine, you know the truth. I am no demon succubus. I don't derive pleasure from altering the minds of my lovers. I don't need fake enthusiasm or false pleasure. I never use dark magic to play with anyone's hearts, black or otherwise. Now, my hands. <laughs> They're like dark witch action figures. Like, like they have like heads and things. Oh, it takes a bit of uh, twisting, but yes, that's weird. This is very fun. I believe you. He's like black magic party. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know how. It's not easy to do. Mostly, I kill people. Who would have thought the tender organ was such a hard lock to pick? That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's got layers. So anything you felt well, that was you. Kamara darted away from the campfire. Sarah knew the witch had been embarrassed to admit she didn't know how to do something, which meant his bewitchment never happened. Yeah. All right. Those hearts. Yeah. All right. Oh, God. Let's More. run it back. <laughs> Got there. Yep. Saren was awakened by a sound in his tent. We're just going to do this for the next four hours. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm okay, Kiwi. I didn't want to disturb you, but I've noticed how you've been flirting with all the others. I felt <laughs> alone. Get out of the tent. God, get get out of the tent, old man. He gasped and sat up. 
Who's there? Oh no! Oh yes! <laughs> the dark figure near the entrance came closer, creeping around Saren's bed first. Mesfit? He silenced Saren with a hand over his mouth. Suddenly his heart was beating out of control. The rebel stared it right into him until he was confident that Saren wouldn't shout. He removed the hand and spoke quietly. They're leaving. What? Come with me. Saren blinked rapidly. No, no, Mesfit, no. Oh, you can't. We can do it. I have the power. Listen to yourself. I am. We both deserve freedom. Break the chains of your slavery. You chose life. Now choose this. Mesfit grabbed Saren's arm and slid his hand down his wrist with a tugging motion. Now choose me. Take it. Take freedom. Red with me. The Dark Elf's passion caused a vision of a prospective life with him to flash in Saren's mind. I'd like to briefly discuss what that life looks like. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm imagining Saren in an apron. Yeah, like just an apron. Of course, 100%. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Mesfit, like, brings in a human corpse and is like, I found this. We could eat it. It was like food, right? I had a really successful day hunting today. I found like three of these in the woods. Yeah. I mean, they were doing what I found. Like, yeah, one of them got his legs trapped into my trap. It was really good. Um, uh, one of them's a lot smaller than the other two. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, um, can you cook this? Yeah, can you? Cause, honey, you're so cute. <laughs> I, I, I also applied for a job. At a bakery. Uh, it was it was a bit. I turned into a demon in the middle of that, but it was a bit. Of, uh, we have to find another bakery. <laughs> Think. Nothing he can conceive ended well. <laughs> the world was still in peril, and there was no land far enough that they could reach without ultimately it ultimately consuming them. If Saren didn't stand against evil here and now, he feared he'd never be able to again. No. Saren tossed Mesfit's hand from him. I will not abandon Loren now. You know what needs to be done in Everburn. We have a duty to Erebor to complete it. But you're running away. Mesfit swallowed and hardened his features of the accusation. All this time, I thought you knew what had to be done. I thought you realized the importance of what we were doing. I thought you were above this. Damn. Savage. Saren felt a great pain in his chest from what he was saying. He gritted his words through his teeth. That's not, that's not how that works. All this time, I thought you knew. I thought that you were... No, that's, that's what they're trying to say he's doing. Yeah. You are gritting your teeth and passing your words through them. That's true. You are not gritting your words. Oh, this time. <laughs> yeah, I just add grit to your words. <laughs> it's my, it's my motif. I was wrong. So go. Run like you always do. No one will care this time. Ooh, damn! Misfit's oh. chest rose and rose and few several times as he stared at Saren for a while. <laughs> He bolted for the opening in the tent. Saren caught his arm and pulled him backwards. The dark elf fell back against him, but thrashed to attempt to escape again. He pushed Saren from him, but Saren slammed all of his body weight against Mesfit, knocking him down. Mesfit rolled over and glared at him. You said... Forget what I said. We need you here. Your people need you here. They were each breathing deeply, but for different reasons. It's... I don't know that deeply and heavily are the same in this context. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm doing it to add to imaginative state. I'm doing it to expand my lung capacity so I'm a better swimmer. <laughs> the call is getting stronger. Each day we get closer to the mountains. The call takes my sight and my hearing. I now myself. I would have them. Saren's grip on Mesfit loosened. His demon blood was getting stronger as they grew closer to their goal. Free me. You know, you know, you make a strong argument. <laughs> like, um, suddenly re- revisiting my re- earlier revisitation. Yeah, go and like work on defense strategies. If you want to, far from the ever get a mountains. job at a bakery. Yeah, um, Saren almost did. He took such pity on him that he wanted to let the dark elf go. But then he discarded <clears throat> the thought. You can break the demon thrall. I have no evidence that you can actually do this. If there's a chance I can bring you out of it, then I can't let you go. The look of anger on Mesfit's face had drained. His face was devoid of any expression. Because what we really need in the heat of battle is a loose-ass cannon who might flip sides at any moment. (laughs) They gazed at each other, stuck in a moment. Neither of them quite understood. Saren spoke what first came to his mind. Don't go. Please don't go. (laughs) Mesfit's eyes flickered, but he didn't surrender. I will. I don't know if I just said I would go or stay. <laughs> I'm confused. We're re- yeah, no. We've got to, we've got to rad this a couple of times now. Yeah, no. This is we're, we're just don't let me succeed. Yeah, we've re- repeated beat, so we're just working in double negatives. I know. Yeah, it's don't not let me run away. I think. Mesfit only gave him a second's warning before he shoved him off and disappeared into the, from the tent. Saren ran after him and chased after him as he fled to the camp. The Dark Elf wasn't as quick as he usually was, as if he was trying to slow himself on purpose, as if he was conflicted within himself. Saren caught up with him and tried to subdue him, but his demon strength emerged. He managed to make some progress in returning Mesfit to camp, but then he'd break free again. They repeated this battle to the point of exhaustion. This has been a long-ass day for Saren. Yeah. Uh, Saren crawled on top of the demon misfit and pressed him firmly to the ground until the fight had left him. They huffed against each other until they blacked out. That's... Huh. That's one way of doing it, I suppose. Huh. They woke the next morning, realizing they'd fallen asleep in the meadow. Camp was on the horizon. Saren succeeded. Misfit was his regular self when he looked up at him, still on top of him. You can't do that every night. Yeah, I can. (laughs) Yeah, Though every muscle in Saren's body ached, he knew that he would be capturing him every night if that's what it took. Wow. The the heavily. Then please don't make me. Become routine from then on. Mesfit had become too skilled at breaking any bonds, even others not. Saren was forced to guard Mesfit where he slept every night. Some nights Mesfit would run and they'd both be able to sleep. On other nights Saren would wake to Mesfit's escape attempt. He'd spend every drop of energy he had to catch and return Mesfit. But it kept Mesfit there, and Saren could tell that Mesfit was grateful, even though he hit it well. No one seemed to know of the escape attempts, or if they did, they didn't say anything. It was a secret and a burden. But Saren was going to share Mesfit's pain until neither could stand it any longer. The reason why was both a mystery and clear as day. Yay! This this guy has no social awareness. Alright, let's run it back! See what we got. Are you ready? <laughs> this seems to be yeah! a really good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Looking roller coaster of emotion. <laughs> God. Hi, Kambara. We're not ending the stream until we, we get through to camp. Yes. <laughs> Kambara approached Saren in camp. I have acquired this spell book for you. Please tell us we get to be a wizard. Oh, 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 oh. If we can jump classes to wizard right now we're doing it what why you know why he held out a decorative black book it looked old and extremely forbidden to possess you want me to practice dark magic again we'll only get better with practice stop saying it like it's a bad thing um you you, you gotta comment it, it this seems to be a really weird relationship i can't tell which one you're talking about it like, at this point, yeah, they're like, all fucking weird. Except for Draco, they're all fucking weird. Yeah, 
Like even Draco. Like because even at Drake at this point with Draco, you're like, I wonder what's going on here. And 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 it's like, really? I know you see it differently than the rest here. You understand. Saren looked away. He wasn't so quick to agree with certain things being wrong anymore. The line between good and evil had muddled a long time ago when he realized the person he admires, who's the queen of Amazons, also is a slave keeper. I haven't made up my mind about it. They Could I change my stats as well as my skills? Mmm, you want the full respect? Tell me, Seren, have you heard of the dark magic known as microtransactions? <laughs> uh, at PAX East um, last week, uh, Mike Krahulik ran a game, a, the live D&D game, and it was basically Fortnite, like the Fortnite Battle Royale, um, including microtransactions. <laughs> he had like all these cards. He's, he's actually, he was releasing the whole thing. There was like a software support thing, and there was like, cards and that kind of thing he's he's releasing a a, a print to play version um and i kind of want to run it but yeah like one of his things was like it was like there are these chests and you can you can go and search to find them in in key locations or for just five dollars us you can get a chest (laughs) you just get one anytime (laughs) you can spend five dollars it's so good. It's like two hours, and I watched all of it, and it was wonderful. It's like that's uh, amazing. <laughs> Jerry Holkins and Pat Rothfuss and Morgan Webb and uh, Holly Conrad, who's in uh, Waffle Crew, the the Chris Perkins stream on the D and D channel. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was so good. But yeah, microtransactions in D and D, it was wonderful. Oh, Saren, take the spell book. Kamara held up the spell book, but Saren didn't take it. Saren. Which his voice wasn't manipulative or seductive. She was looking at him as seriously as she could. He begrudgingly took the book from her and she smiled. He cracked open the ancient text and flipped through the pages randomly. Kambara shifted to stand next to him so she could read along. These are quite complicated for me, but I know they are already within your grasp. Saren saw Mirth cross his field of vision. He watched Mirth grimace and walk away on seeing him with Kambara. Something in his chest tightened. Mara looked up and saw Saren was no longer paying attention to the book. Let's go somewhere more private, away from Lechera's eyes. I don't think that that's what kind of eyes they are. She tugged on Saren's eyes, to, or arm, his eyes, to pull him away from Cam. He followed, though he had to cast a glance backward to see if Mirth was still there. Before they reached very far, a buzzing bee flew around Kamara's head. She swatted it away, but it wasn't frightened off. Hold still. I'll get it. Another aggressive bee. Uh, began to irritate Kamara. Really good uh, Zach Sherwin song, The Aggressive Bee. Um, Shooing it away did nothing. (laughs) Kamara (laughs) growled and whipped out her wand in a flash. The bees turned into flying bats and flew away from her at great speed. Saren's mouth opened when he saw the bats flying right at Mirth. Mirth was ready, however. The flick of her staff, Mirth turned the bats into large birds that flew straight back at at the witch. What's going on? This would look this would look really cool. <clears throat> Kamara angrily whipped her wand at the birds and they fell dead to the ground. Ooh! <laughs> Mirth gasped in horror. I'm like, those they must be really confused anyway. Spiders burst from the dead birds' bodies and swarmed towards Mirth. A ring of wind exploded from Mirth and the spiders disintegrated, but she didn't stop there. Vines shot out from the ground sporadically until they sprung around Kambara and tried to ensnare her. This is aggressive and weird. It's enraged Kambara and she ran right at Mirth. Mirth was scared but stood her ground and repelled Kambara's attempt to disarm her. Stop. Mirth pushed at Kambara with too much force that she stumbled forwards and Kambara grabbed a handful of her hair. Wow, we're really just doing this. Mm, yeah. A oh, filthy flower. Ah, ya evil wetch! Mirth sent vines shooting out right underneath Kambara, knocking them away from each other. Kambara rattled as she shaped shifted into a giant scorpion. Get over here! The vines wrapped around its pincers and tail. They wrapped around the scorpion's neck and it stopped. Do scorpions have necks? 
Sure. Okay. They have they have a set like they have a clear division between division thorax between, and head. Yeah. Yeah. They don't breathe through their throat. Yeah. But that. But you could pull their head off. Yeah. That might kill them. Yeah. No. Definitely. That would like. Certainly. It would slow them down. It, it, it would kill them in time, in that they can no longer eat or see. Yeah. I guess that's the thing that would really slow them down. Saren realized what he was witnessing. Mirth was killing Kambara. Okay, so... This is really interesting, because so both of these wind up, end up with Kambara being fine. Yes. The question is... Um, this is going to affect our relationship with Mirth, obviously, and Kambara. So... Given that Kambara is actively attempting to murder, uh, no, sorry, that that Mirth is trying to kill Kambara at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and the phrase "calm down, Mirth," will definitely not calm anyone the fuck down. Yeah, no, that's fair. Let, let's let's intercede. Uh, cut some vines. Saren didn't need to think twice. He took his blade and sliced at the vines. Like I'm sad. I like Mirth, but. They recoiled and started to unwrap from the scorpion, but Saren couldn't wait more. He pulled at the vines around its neck to free her faster. Oh. It wasn't a scorpion that fell into his arms, but Kumbara. That's probably good, actually. Are no. you okay? He's just like cradling a giant scorpion. <laughs> Speak to me. Her head lifted, and she looked into Saren's eyes, trying to recover her breath. They held their look for a moment until Mirth sobbed from behind them. Saren looked back to see Mirth's trembling hand cover her mouth. Uh, I, I didn't mean to, uh, I, I, sh I shouldn't have, uh... Instinctively, Saren held Kambara closer. Mirth's attack didn't make any more sense after the fact, either. Mirth squeaked and ran back to camp to disappear into her tent. Yeah, we're, we're just annihilating our, our yeah. relationship with Mirth. It's interesting that it does, it's gradual, though, right? Like, you get to choose. Yeah. Go oh, on, do you my little hero saving me and everything? Saren looked back down at Kambara. You were going to die. I did what needed to be done. Is that why I'm so wrapped, tightly, wrapped so tightly in your manly arms? Saren lifted her off of him immediately and she laughed. He was too embarrassed to stay, so he turned away to head back to camp as well. Well, now, where are you going? You've barely looked at the book. She waved the spell book and urged him to continue to follow her into the forest. After much internal de debate, he allowed himself to do that. Hopefully, he becomes a wizard. All right, let's run it back. Round 11. Oh! oh got there. Oh, thank, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> thank Christ. All right. All right. Uh, we went right to left, or left to right last time. So oh, we'll God, go. we're going to keep talking to them. Oh, we're totally good. This is our last chance. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, after this, we go to the Everburn, and we can't go back to camp ever. Okay, yep. Yeah, let's, uh... Dude, I told you before that I'd, like, sin. And then I was repenting, right? Uh, yeah. I'm willing to share with you what that was now. Okay. Sarah leaned in on bended ear. Dude, I was once like a common bandit. I was young. I fell into a bad crowd. I betrayed my best friend, Ryu. Just to get food for my family. But that was not my greatest sin. My thieving lifestyle hurt my family more than it helped in the end. My sister was very smart. She was granted access to the Wizards Academy in Horus, but it was mucho expensive, dude. I took the extra money on jobs. The gang found out. I begged for my life in every way that I could think, and I'm sure I lied a bunch, but I told them my family's moved to a new city. As a reason to live, they spared me. But like, my sister's caravan never reached Horus. So that is why I decided to pursue a life of honesty. That's why. You... And it's why you still don't feel atoned. Your sins were too personal. Cha. Let's go with friendly. Yeah. That seems like not. Ha 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 ha! Your sister died! <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? Uh, sister. Sister who? 
Uh, sister didn't make it, but, you know. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Not your sister. <laughs> Thank you. That was the one that I needed. I thought I had it, and then I just it just went out of my grasp. That's. That I'm was, sure your that's... sister has long forgiven you. That's... But I have yet to forgive myself. And that's important, too. Sarah placed a hand on Souser's shoulder. It's okay to find peace. Chaw. That was very touching. Yep. Like, oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Oh, why? Why? Here we go. Any news on the liberation of the Dark Elves? Oh, wow. An actual conversation. Mesfit was silent for a while. I've heard the elders. I heard talks with my father. Only through intermediaries, however. He's still not allowed to enter the forest. But why not? Mirth can prove he is harmless. Quickly finding out who holds the real power in the forest. The druids may own the trees, but the others own everything in between. The trees, of course, make up the literal forest, but it's sort of a cool metaphor that the elves can't tell the forest from the trees. Oh, gods, just press the space bar. <laughs> but if they're deliberating, then that's progress? Some progress. You still cannot be optimistic. I'll relax my ire. The moment my people can live among the forest elves and be treated no different. That may take hundreds of years. I fucking said what I said. It's upset Mesfit, but he did not shout. I'm becoming more aware of that. It's unfair, and I'll fight it every step of the way. But if that's the only way, then I'll walk that path with my brothers and sisters. We've been 1,000 years ostracized. I hope it doesn't take a 1,000 more to erase that. He's like fucking Dark Elf Malcolm X now. Mirth is do doing what she can, but I kind of keep pissing her off. But even still... Mesfit, you will never be able to live in the forest. You are part demon. Wow, that's cold. I've come to terms with my fate. I'm fighting for my kid. That's enough. What will you do if the Dark Elves are allowed back in the forest and they all leave you behind in the desert? Move to this city. Become a thing that criminals fear. Not all will go. R really? I, th I thought that was the whole point. The point is the choice. We are cut off from our homeland. The forest is opened back up to us. We can choose for ourselves how we may live. It's not who we are. Sarah, it's, it's what we do that defines us. <laughs> I already know that many dark elves will remain in the desert. So will adopt the forest. What about your father? He... He deserves to live in the forest. He's dreamed of it for a long time. I hope that he gets that chance in his lifetime. Elves are literally immortal. Thanks. Just drink oh, that was, my water. Yeah, that was fine. It's, uh... Make me a wizard! Kambara smirked and looked Saren up and down. What now? I think it's cute that you think you can ignore me. I'm not ignoring you. It is what someone who is pretending to ignore me would say. Maybe that is wrong word for it. Intimidate me, maybe? I don't know what you're talking about. It won't work, is what I'm saying. Can flaunt it around with the fire mages and the gladiators and the demon boys. There's no matter. Saren began to flush. Kambar was getting too personal. What does that have to do with you? Maybe nothing. Maybe, Maybe everything. <laughs> Kamara turned away and abruptly left Saren. Was this her way of saying she was jealous? 